All right, so there were a number of students who had a really hard time with these problems. We're gonna go ahead and go over these real quick and I want you to watch this before our live class tomorrow and then I'll answer any additional questions you have tomorrow. So let's jump in. In the first question here, we're told that an eight kilogram cart moving at five meters per second when it hits a spring of constant 50 newtons per meter. Now, as we look at this, that means that our kinetic energy is going to equal our elastic potential energy. If you're looking at your diagrams, it should have looked like this, where you have EK equals EEL. The first thing I noticed is that students either didn't have the right bar or pie charts, or they had the right pie charts, but then couldn't convert it into an equation. So with these, you're going to take the pie chart on the left and everything that's in that pie chart and then set that equal to the pie chart on the right and everything that's in that pie chart. So in this case, EK is equal to EEL. How fast it's moving, the energy stored in the motion is going to be equal to its elastic potential energy. Then we're going to take one half mv squared, that's the equation for EK, and set that equal to one half kx squared. Now the problem is told and given to you that the mass is eight kilograms, the velocity is five meters per second, and that k is 50 newtons per kilogram, or excuse me, per meter, not per kilogram. And we're trying to solve for this distance right here, not squared, but just the x. So if we plug and chug and put those numbers in, I've dropped out the units here, um, but I know that my answer is going to wind up being in meters because that's what we're, we're working with here. We get that X is equal to 6.3 meters. So a couple places I saw this go wrong. One, not having the right equations up here. Two, algebra mistakes. Those were the main issues. So let's look at number two. So for number two, we're starting with a 20 kilogram cart initially at rest and rolling down a hill. What do we have here? What's So what we have here is we've got our gravitational potential energy is going to equal our kinetic energy, assuming there's no friction, which is what's told in the problem. So that means we're going to say, and I want to see all of these steps written out. Those of you who had problems and didn't show any work, I went, oh, well, that's why you have problems, because you didn't show work. E.g is equal to EK. Equation for EG is MGH, which is equal to one half MV squared. Those are the equations for each of those. And then we're plugging this in here. Now, one thing about that, that 10 newtons per kilogram is the same as 10 meters per second squared. So a couple of you said like, how does that cancel out? Well, the way that it works then is that if I take here, in this step, 10 meters per second squared times 5 meters, I get 50 oopsies, meters squared per second squared. And then um, when I take the square root of meters squared per second squared, I get meters per second, which is what my final answer is. In. So we go here. I went ahead and just canceled out the mass because it's the same on both sides. You could have plugged that number in and then it would have eventually canceled out through your division. Um, as we look at this, as you do that algebra then, and you plug in the quantities, we know g is 10, the height is five meters, and then the mass, if you plug that in, you'd have a 20 over here and a 20 over here. I canceled those out already. Once you plug those in, you can solve for V and in this case, you get 10 meters per second. For number three now, this is where things get a little bit dicey. And I like the diciness of this. So we know at the beginning here, we've got the same setup at the start. EG is equal to EK. But 10% of the initial energy is lost to friction. So this is obviously not 10% of this square, or oh boy, I just call this square. Um, it's, it's Monday, folks. EK is going to be plus how much internal energy we have is going to equal 
how much energy we have at the beginning. The key takeaway is that these two are equal to each other. So what does that look like in an equation? Well, what it looks like is that the gravitational potential energy plus how fast it's moving plus the 10% of the gravitational potential energy that's been lost to friction. So this is equal to 0.1 times how much gravitational potential energy we have. And then once I've got this correct, boom, we're good. Now this is one this is one that I knew was going to stretch you guys. This is this is a little bit tricky. But once we've got this, what we do is we can pull in all of the equations we know. We know that EG is mgh, ek, one half mv squared, and then 0 0.10 times mgh. Once we have that, we can plug all of those different numbers in. Once you plug in all of those numbers, you get um, something like 3 root 10, which is which is 9.48 9.48 and you know what that's good because this number this velocity is smaller than our number from the last time so that's a good sign if it was faster or something else was going on there we would have messed up oh boy i just threw my pen across the room now if we look at the next one here let's grab the shark pen shark pen makes me happy so on the next one here this one was another one where we had to combine more than one thing. Now, I thought three was the most challenging problem. This one was a little tricky, too. So we had a spring set up originally, and then we're shooting it forwards, and then it's moving, and it's a little bit higher. So to start off with, we have elastic potential energy. And then at the end, we have a combination of gravitational potential energy and it's moving. So once we have those, we get elastic potential energy equals EG plus EK. You really need to write these out and then make sure you're double checking with this side of the equation matches with this pie chart. This side of the equation matches with this pie chart. Now we plug in the knowns here. So we know that the spring has a K of 100. Oh, um, here's what the equations look like, just so that 1 half kx squared is equal to mgh plus 1 half mb squared. So if we go over here, we have 100 newtons per meter times 0.5 squared, careful there, times 1 meter or 1 kilogram times 10 times 1 meter plus 1 half 1 kilogram times the velocity squared. That means over here this side is going to simplify to 12.5 plus 10 plus 1 half v squared. So we get v squared equals 5. So that means v equals the square root of 5 or about 2.23 meters per second. All right now the last one we have work being done on our system here. So we've got a bullet, it's moving fast. That bullet has a mass of 0 0.025 kilograms and then a velocity of 350 meters per second. So the kinetic energy that it has is all going to equal the work done on the bullet. Now what does that mean? Well if we look here we have some amount of kinetic energy. It's moving fast and it has a mass. Over here E sub k is zero. That means the work done is equal to how much kinetic energy we had to begin with. So kinetic energy is equal to the work done on the bullet. So 1 half mv squared is equal to the force times the distance. That means that we get 1 half times the mass times the velocity squared is equal to 50,000 newtons times the distance.
and we'll go ahead and try and solve that for x. Now, when we do that, we out we get, once we do that in our calculators, you get x equals 0 0.031 meters. So if a bullet was actually moving this fast and had that mass, it could be stopped by a three centimeter piece of wood. And that's as far into the block as the bullet would go. All right, make sure that you've checked over this and uh, you've corrected yours. And then we'll talk about these and do some more of these tomorrow in our live class at 1.15. I will see you all then.